Howdy, y'all. Thank you for joining us today for this playthrough of Marvel Champions, the card game. And what we're going to play is the Cyclops deck, Unchanged, straight out of the pack. If it's your first time joining me, welcome. This is what I like to do, is whenever they come out with a new hero pack, I like to basically take that hero pack, shuffle it, sleeve it up, shuffle it up, Unchanged, and play it up against normally Rhino because he's the kind of the starter character. But since we're into the X-Men now for flavor, I decided to go with Sabretooth. And with Sabretooth, I went ahead and mixed in. Well, of course, we got his obligation we have to mix in. But I went with what it said on the back of the Sabretooth card. Or not the Sabretooth card, but his scheme. What they recommended was the Brotherhood and Mystique. So that's what we got mixed in here. There's Mystique's cards. And I'm sure I got a Brotherhood around here somewhere. Oh, there's some Brotherhood. Along with Sabretooth's cards and the, um, the standard set. All right. So we're going to shuffle this up. And... If you've seen these before, you know what I do is basically I decide to play the first round of the game where I basically kind of do like a teach. That way if this is somebody's first time playing or watching and they're wanting to see if they're interested in the game, they should be able to follow along. So I do kind of a teach mostly on the first round. After that, it's only if something new comes up. So... With that, as I'm teaching the first part of this, I will be shuffling the encounter deck to make sure it gets a good shuffle. I've already kind of shuffled this 100 times. We'll give it a couple more shuffles before we get way into it. But what happens is Sabretooth is basically trying to find Robert Kelly, stalk him, and eliminate him. That is the scheme he is trying to pull off. He wins if he can pull off his scheme, which is to find Robert Kelly and eliminate him. Because it says here, if Robert Kelly leaves, leaves play, the players lose the game. Or if he manages to knock out all the heroes. Since we're doing solo, that means just knocking out me. Or knocking out Cyclops. In order for us to stop that from happening, in order for us to win... We have to knock Sabretooth out of his two stages that we've chosen. And we're going stage one and two. And you can see his hit points that we'll have to knock him out first, 13 hit points per player. And then he'll go to a stage two where he'll get 15 hit points per player. So if we can pull that off, we can win. And a lot of this is written here. It just kind of tells you what you should put in the decks and how you rec how it recommends. Then it says for the st setup, put the find the sender side scheme into play. So find the sender into play. Robert Kelly cannot be healed by card card effect healed by card effects player card effects can't read today apparently and cannot have upgrades attached. When defeated, the first player detaches Robert Kelly from this scheme. It takes control of him. Advance this to scheme 2A. Find the card and place it next to the main scheme. So what that is saying is we're going to put let me stack these correctly here. We're going to put this into play. It's going to have 5 threat on it. And if we can remove that 5 threat then we're going to attach this to us. We're going to gain him as a ally. We're going to progress to this next scheme. And then we're going to flip this card. It's going to have some more rules for us to have to follow. We're going to go ahead. I know these are damage counters. And I always say it every time because I prefer to have counters on my stuff. That way I can easily see it easier as I'm removing. I just use them as hit point counters. And that lets me know better where their hit points are. Especially with weird cards like the Ant-Man ally and whatnot. All right, so we put that into play. And it says, attach the Robert Kelly ally to it. We did that. While that, attached, while, that, while that is attached to the find the senator, Robert Kelly is in play, but under no player's control. So it's like, you know, this card is in play, but he is under nobody's control. 
Now that we've done all that, we flip this over and we do the force response that says, it lets us know this scheme, which is the main scheme, is going to start with zero thread on it. And when we hit step one of the villain phase where we add threat to the scheme, we also have to do this forced response. After resolving step one of the villain phase, deal two damage to Robert Kelly. Three damage instead if there is six threat per player here. So he's going to be slowly taking damage until we can grab him and protect him. While Robert Kelly is attached to find the senator, treat this text box, treat his text box as if it were blank. So basically just saying nothing is what, like this is just blank. There's nothing written in there. All right, so we're going to get us a few more shuffles and then we'll call that good. All right. Now the rest of the setup, we would check to see if there's anything on Sabretooth. All that's on here we'll get to during his villain phase because he has a forced response whenever he activates. So we'll get to that whenever we hit that point. All right. We're going to shuffle up this Cyclops deck a little bit. We do start with it on Scott Summer's side, which lets us know we have a hand size of six with 10 hit points. So 10 hit points. Also realize I just forgot to do saber tooths, which were 13 hit points per player. Oh, yep, 13. All right. All right, so we put this into play. We'll give this a few more shuffles. Like I said, I already gave it quite a few shuffles. Made sure to do at least 100 since it was fresh out of the box. But that should be way more than enough shuffles, so we'll call it there. All right, and we start with a starting hand size of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then now, the first steps would be we would get a mulligan where we would be able to look at our hand and discard any cards we wanted to from our hand. And then after we get done discarding, we draw back up to our max hand size. Since I'm not 100%, I mean, I think I kind of understand how this deck's supposed to work. Sounds like we're going to be taking, from what I saw in the unboxing, we're going to be taking tactic cards, putting them on bad guys, and that's going to weaken them or make them uh, able to do other abilities to and do damage to and whatnot, while it's also a leadership deck. Since I'm not sure 100%, I am not going to take a mulligan, so I'm going to keep this opening hand. And once we do that, we check if there's any other setup. And once there isn't, then we are done. Now, Scott Summers here, normally you can only have your deck as four aspects. It's got to be either judgment, or judgment, justice, protection, leadership, or aggression. This one came as a leadership deck, which is about having allies. And one of the setups in his thing, it's not really a setup, it's when you build your deck, it says you can include X-Men allies from any aspect into your deck. So you're going to see non-leadership ones in here is what we noticed during the unboxing. All right, once we've decided if we're going to do our mulligan, once we've declined our mulligan, we've done all the setup, we are ready to begin. And the begin game begins in the hero phase and it starts with the first player who's going to have this token since we're all, since it's just solo we're not going to worry about this token and we're going to be just the only player we're going to go through our phase and then once we finish that we'll go to the villain phase and that'll be the end of a round so during the hero phase we're basically going to take actions one of the actions you could do are any of the cards you have out here to just say action. And you have an unlimited number of actions. It's just the actions thing just saying you have to use it during your phase as an action or during another hero's phase as an action. So in a case like this, this says as an action, constant training as an action, I can search my deck for a tactic upgrade and add it to my hand limit once per round. So if I want to, I'm going to do my first action and I'm going to go ahead and search through my deck and go get a tactic upgrade and add it to my hand. 
Sorry, I took it off camera to search because since I had didn't know anything about the deck, I was going to have to read the reach of them. I think I'm going to take this one, which funny enough was right here on the bottom anyways. But I'm going to take this tactic and add it to my hand. And now we just got to shuffle the deck. All right. Okay, another action you can take on your turn is once per turn, you can swap forms on your identity. You can switch from Alter Ego to Hero or vice versa. So I'm going to take this step or this action to go ahead and flip from my Alter Ego form to my Hero form. And you can see here that when I do, it changes my basic abilities. And we'll get to those here in a second because I will use them. And it also gives you a new type of action. But it's also going to usually change your hand size to lower. But the hit points shouldn't change because that is your base hit points. Another thing you could do on your turn is you have all these cards in your hand. And if you want, you can play these cards from your hand. But they cost a number of resources equal to the number in the left hand corner. In order to pay those said resources, you would have to, if you notice at the bottom of every card, the resources are at the bottom. And there are usually three different resources, four if you count the wild resource. In this case, I just have a hand of two of the resources. But in order to pay the said resources, you would just discard the cards from hand and then that would pay for the cards. So for instance, I want to bring this upgrade into play, the Ruby, Ruby Quartz Visor. It costs two to play, so I'm going to discard these two cards from hand. And then now that paid the two here. And now I get to put this upgrade into play. And what an upgrade is, it's an item that will attach to, an, to a character. In this case, to my identity. And this is an item. It is unique, so I can only have one. But there's only one in the whole deck anyways. But it's a hero resource. Exhaust this card. And then I can generate a energy resource for your optic blast ability. That attack gains piercing and ranged. And that has to do with this action I have down here. So for now, we're just going to attach this to Cyclops, knowing that we now have this upgrade on him. Next, I want to play another upgrade. I'm going to play this one, which is a zero cost upgrade. So I don't have to pay anything. And it says attached to an enemy, max one per enemy. Temporary means that at the end of the round, so after I finish my phase and the villain finishes their phase, this is going to go away. That'll be the end of the round. And then attached enemy gets minus one attack. So we're going to attach this to Sabretooth, making it to where he has minus one attack until the end of the round. And really, I wanted to play this on him because it sounded like I was going to do a bunch of damage, but then I wouldn't have had the resources... Because it would have cost me one to put this into play. And then I wouldn't have had the two to do this anyway. So I'm just going to drain my hand of resources and go from there. Next, I'm going to activate this action. Sorry about that. There was something in the sleeve there and it was bothering me. So I decided to take it out real fast. Okay. Next, I'm going to activate this action that it says down here. It says I can spend one resource of any type. To deal three damage to an enemy with an upgrade attached. Limit once per round. Well, remember I have this Ruby Quartz Visor that said I could exhaust this card to generate a energy resource for my Optic Blast ability. Optic Blast ability. And then that attack gains piercing and ranged. All piercing and ranged are if he had this, th this ability called toughness. Piercing ignores that. And then ranged basically ignores the retaliate ability. So, I'm going to exhaust the Ruby Quartz Visor. That gives me the wild resource I need here where it said spend one resource of any type. And then now, as an attack, I can deal three damage to an enemy with an upgrade attached. Well, Sabretooth now has an upgrade attached to him. 
So I'm going to do three damage to Sabretooth. Next, I'm going to play Ricochet Beam. It costs me two to play. There's my two resources. And what Ricochet Beam is, it is a event, attack, superpower. What an event is, is it's a one-time play. It means we're going to do what the card says, and then we discard it. So, here we go. I paid the two. It is a hero action, so it's an action I can only do if I'm in hero form. I'm in hero form. I could deal three damage to an enemy and then, period, deal three damage to an enemy with an upgrade attached. So I'm going to deal three damage to an enemy. So I'm going to choose to do three damage to Sabretooth. Three damage to Sabretooth, taking him to seven. And then now. I can do the next part. Deal three damage to an enemy with an upgrade attached. Well, Sabretooth has an upgrade attached to him, so I'm going to do three damage to Sabretooth again. Taking him to four. And then we're done with the card. Optic Blast, Corner Pocket. Another thing you could do on your turn is you have what's called a basic ability. You have thwart, attack, and defense, and on your alter ego you have recovery. What a basic ability is, is on your turn you can exhaust your character and you can thwart a scheme for two threat. So in this case, what that means is if I exhaust Cyclops and thwart a scheme, I would get to remove two threat from a scheme. So like, if I wanted, I could remove two of the threat from this scheme if I wanted. Or, I can exhaust Cyclops and attack someone or, some, or one of the minions or bad guys for one damage. Or, when I have an attack coming in on me, I can exhaust Cyclops and I can reduce the damage of the attack by this number here. If I was in Alter Ego form, I could exhaust my identity and recover this number of hit points up to my max. I, I can't do that because I'm not in Alter Ego and I'm already at my max anyways, but just thought I'd mention it since we're talking about basic abilities right now. I'm going to exhaust Cyclops and thwart uh, the find the Senator scheme for two threat. And the reason I have to do the find the Senator... I'm going to do it either way, but I didn't mention it w during the setup, but normally the main scheme will be getting this threat on it. And you want to make sure to get that threat pulled off, because like in the case of this one, it's going to do more damage to Robert Kelly, the more threat that's on here. Or once a certain amount of threat gets on here. But, I forgot to mention that when this Find the Senator came into play, Side schemes typically are just annoyances in the game that make the game harder. And in this case, they, they normally add like an ability or something. In this case, it added this symbol, which is the crisis icon symbol. The crisis icon says that I cannot remove threat from this main scheme as long as this is in play. So even if there was threat over here, I could not do that as long as this is in play. Now, we want to remove this anyways because we want to try to find Robert Kelly before Sabretooth finishes him off. So we're going to thwart this scheme for the two. Once you have no actions that you want to do or can do, or you just, like I said, you just don't want to do any more actions, you can go to, you can finish out your turn and say you're done. At that point, the next player in clockwise order would go and do all their stuff. In this case, we're solo, so this is the end of the hero phase. And once the end, all the heroes are done, you hit the end of the hero phase. And the first thing you can do is you can discard any cards from your hand that you do not want in hand. In this case, I have no cards in hand, so there's no cards for me to discard. Once all the players have discarded, or made their choices for discard, they all draw up to whatever their hand size is. Now remember, on the other side it was six, 
But now that I'm in hero form, my new max hand size is 5. So that means I get to draw up to a hand size of 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then once everyone's drawn up, or once they've drawn up, they ready and unexhaust all their cards in their play area. And that is the end of the hero phase. After that, we move to the villain phase. And the first step of the villain phase is to accelerate the main scheme. This is accelerate that main scheme by one per number of players. And then it has a little asterisk to let's remind us to do the forced response. So we have to add one threat per player to the main scheme. One threat is added. Next, we do the forced response that after resolving step one, that was step one of the villain phase, deal two damage to Robert Kelly. So we have to do two damage to Robert Kelly. Three if there was six threat here, but there isn't. Or six threat per player, but there isn't. Next, the villain is going to activate. And the villain's activation is going to depend upon what form Okay, and I, well, let me, let me reward that. The villain is going to activate against every player. And, the, and it's going to activate dependent upon what form their identity is in. So it will start with the first player and it will check and it will look and see. And if the identity of the main player is in alter ego form, then the villain will scheme and add more threat to the main scheme. If the identity is in hero form, it will attack that character. And that's when I have to choose to defend or not. I am in hero form. So hero, so Sabretooth is going to attack me. Now is when I'd have to choose if I want to defend. I'm going to choose to defend, which means I exhaust my character, and after we see how much damage he does, I get to reduce the damage by whatever my defense modifier is, which in this case is 2. But remember, now that I defended, I don't ready this character or unexhaust them until the end of my turn. So that means now I cannot do any of my basic abilities on my next turn. Now that I've chosen to defend, we're going to look and see how much damage he does. Sabretooth does two damage here. And since he's a villain, he gets to get what's called a boost card. So he's going to add a boost card to his boost cards. And then, because there could be more there, and then we're going to flip them all over. And we're going to ignore all of the card except for whatever's down here in the bottom. And we're looking for that little red symbol right there. However many of this symbol is there is how many pluses he gets to whatever, or the villain gets to whatever they are doing. So in this case, he was attacking for two plus one. So he does three damage. But remember, I have this tactic on him that gives him minus one attack. So now he is only doing two damage. Well, lucked out. I defended for two. So that means 2 minus 2 is 0, so I take 0 damage from the attack. Sabretooth also has a forced response that anytime he activates, which the activation was the attack, he also gets to discard the top card of the encounter deck, and he heals damage equal to how many of those same boost symbols that were discarded this way. So he discards his card, and we're only looking for that boost symbol. I'm going to go off on a little tangent here and just talk about this little star symbol. That is called a boost ability. And if this would have shown up when he activated, then we would go and look at the boost ability. And that would tell us what we would have to do. But in this case, we weren't doing it for a boost ability. We were just seeing how much he regenerates for, which is one. So he's going to regenerate one hit point. Next, if there were any minions in play that engaged with that player, they would do the same thing. 
as Sabretooth did, in this case attacking, but they don't get the boost cards. They would just attack for whatever their attack is for. But there's no minions in play, so we go past that. Next is called the encounter step. During the encounter step, you deal every player an encounter card into their encounter cards, and then they have to activate all the encounter cards that are dealt to them, that, were, that are in their pile. So we have the one here, and now we have to see what this card is. And in this case, we do read over the card. And it says here, Assault. When revealed, if I'm in Alter Ego form, this card gains Surge, which would mean discard this and do another card. When revealed, well not discard, but discard because it could be something else, but just basically says we have to do another card. When revealed, Hero form, the villain attacks you. Well, I'm in Hero form, so he is going to attack me. Unfortunately, since I am already exhausted, I cannot choose to defend. So I'm just going to have to take this one in the face. So he is going to attack me. So he's going to do 2 damage, plus his boost card. So 2, 3, 4, minus 1. He's going to do 3 damage. And so we don't forget to do his activated abilities. I tend to do that a lot. So I take 3 damage. And then now Sabretooth's going to regenerate. Oh, it's good to see this one go. As for this, he's going to regenerate for 2. I mean, I hate to see him regenerate for 2, but Shadows of the Past is out of the deck. Which, if you saw my Shadow Cat and Colossus playthrough, you know why. Once we've done all of our encounter cards, we go to the last part of the villain step is, we pass the first player marker to the next person in player order, and that's the end of the round. Now we do have a trigger to happen at the end of the round, which was, he lost this upgrade, which is very unfortunate for me. But now we're back to the beginning of my turn, and we just go back and forth until I can knock him out through both of his stages, or he can knock out Robert Kelly or me. Alright, I want to play Tactical Brilliance here. It costs two to do such. So I'm going to discard these two cards. And now we get to do this Tactical Brilliance, which is an event, so a one-time. It is a Thwart event. Remember, Thwart is removing threat from a scheme. Hero, action, hero, Thwart, remove three threat from a scheme. Choose a tactic card in your discard pile and add it to your hand. So, remove three threat from a scheme. We're going to remove this three threat from this scheme, which is enough to remove all the threat from it, so it is defeated. So now we have to do all the stuff for it, which is the first player detaches Robert Kelly from his scheme and takes control of him. So I take this and take control of Robert Kelly. Next, advance to main scheme 2A. All right, so we go advance to main scheme 2A. So this one is done. We go to main scheme 2A, which says when revealed, deal each player a face down encounter card. I always forget that. And remember, we dealt it now, but we don't deal with it until we get to the encounter step during the villain phase. But we've done that. So now we flip this over. And it says, the injured senator, get Robert Kelly to safety before Sabretooth finishes the job. When completed, defeat Robert Kelly. So, basically what it's saying is, when he completes this, he completes this by getting 9 threat on here per player. So, if he gets 9 threat on here per player, he completes it, which lets him defeat Robert Kelly. Well, remember, it's still got the same text here that if Robert Kelly leaves play, the players lose the game. So, basically... This is him trying to pull off his main scheme. It starts with zero threat on there, and it's still going to just do plus one per player during that step one, during the acceleration. All right, so we did everything for 2A. Now flip this card and place it next to the main scheme. Protect the Senator. 
Robert Kelly cannot be healed by player card effects. It cannot have upgrades attached. So that's just saying I can't heal him with my cards. And I cannot put upgrades on him to beef him up or anything. And then after your hero defends against an attack from Sabretooth, I can spend two resources of any type, as long as I'm in hero form, and I can ready that hero. Only the player who controls Robert Kelly can trigger this ability. Well, because the reason we need that is because now, remember all this was blank, but now Robert Kelly says the first player controls Robert Kelly. He does not count against your ally limit and cannot have player cards attached. Forced interrupt, when an enemy resolves an undefended attack against you, deal that damage to Robert Kelly. So basically, if I don't defend against an attack, he's going to take the damage either way. Alright, all that was from just removing the three threat. We still have not finished out this tactical brilliance, which says, choose a tactic card in your discard pile and add it to your hand. I'm going to go for that practice defense. It really ain't going to help us. I just want it so that I can do extra damage. And I don't want to use discard any of these cards. Because I wanted to go for that one that would have done extra damage that I like so much. But then I require I have to pay resources, which I don't want to do. So we're going to do this one instead. Zero cost. Upgrade. Or add it to my hand and now I'm playing it. Attach to an enemy. Max one per enemy. Temporary, attached enemy gets minus one attack. So we're attaching that to Sabretooth. And then now I'm going to activate my Optic Blast because it doesn't say I have to exhaust Cyclops in order to do that, which means I can still activate the action. So, let's, uh, so I'm activating the Optic Blast. It says spend one resource of any type. Oh, hero resource. I'm spending resource. I guess I didn't mention that. But yeah, resources are basically the things that when you're doing that, it's like kind of an interrupt, but it's only for paying for resources. So I'm paying for resources. Oh, here we go. Hero resource. Hero form resource. Exhaust this card. Generate an energy resource for your Optic Blast ability. That attack gains piercing and ranged. So we're dealing, we're at, we played it. We deal three damage to an enemy with an upgrade attached. Sabretooth has an upgrade attached, so he's going to take the three damage. Taking him to four again. And then now I am going to go ahead and take advantage of there being no threat on the main scheme and switch to my alter ego form. I could activate this action still because it doesn't make me exhaust Scott Summers to do it, but going and getting a tactic card right now isn't going to help my situation because I'm going to be drawing it up anyway because I'm going to the end of my phase, so I'm not going to take advantage of doing that action. I'm really just switching to the alter ego form so that I can get a hand draw and hopefully draw some more cards, so maybe burn him down to his stage two on the next turn. Actually, I take that back. I am going to go ahead and activate that action. So I'm going to go search through my deck to get a tactic. It's got to be a tactic upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and get this one. It doesn't say to reshuffle, but anytime you go through your deck, you should reshuffle. And then now, I want to play Angel here. Sorry, I hesitate there a little bit because I realized he was only cheaper. I thought it might be only X-Men, but it says X-Men are mutant. And I'll show here. I want to bring Angel into play. He costs three, but it says here, reduce the cost to play Angel by one if your identity has the mutant or X-Men trait. So I was thinking I screwed up by going over here, but he is a mutant. So it does reduce it by one. So it only cost me two. And the reason I hesitated also, I wanted to keep this to do all that extra damage, but 
I figure he's going to do about the same amount of damage, and it lets me draw a whole fresh hand. So let's go ahead and play those two to bring out Angel here. So Angel is an ally, and he we already saw his cost. This is how many hit points he has, and you can see he has the same basic abilities that I do, except he has these little stars underneath each of them. What those are is if he does that ability, then he has to take, after doing it, damage equal to those stars. So those are called consequence damage. So in this case, I have Angel out here. And I'm going to have Angel go ahead and attack Sabretooth. So I exhaust Angel to attack Sabretooth for two damage. And then now, since Angel attacked, and it shows one star there, he has to take one consequence damage for doing such. With that, I have no more cards in hand. There's no more actions I want to do. So we'll go to my end step. I have no cards to discard. So now we're going to draw to my hand size of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ready all of my cards. We go to the top of the villain phase. It's going to accelerate the scheme by one. So it's got one to the nine it needs in order to pull off his scheme. Next, the villain's going to activate. I am in alter ego form. So the villain will scheme for one plus his boost cards. So one, two, three going to add three threat to the scheme. That is an activation, so Sabretooth will still activate and heal for two. That's why this is a little tougher than Rhino, because he just keeps regenerating. No minions in play. So, deal an encounter card during the encounter step. Now we have two encounter cards we're going to have to deal with. The first one, Unrelenting Savage. Uh-oh. When revealed, I'm not made a mistake. We'll see. When revealed, Alter Ego Sabretooth Schemes. If he has no sustained damage, he gets plus one scheme for this activation. Well, I'm in Alter Ego form. So he's going to scheme. We won't even go through that. If he was in hero form, he'd attack. He has sustained damage, so he doesn't get the plus one. So he's going to scheme for one, two, three, four. Literally, 8 to the 9. Oh, uh, this is a scheme. We just lose. It happens. He activated, so he gets to heal again. For 0, because that, remember, we're only looking, it says there, I know it's hard to make out, but it says only looking for the boost symbols. So, he heals for none. And then now, we do the second one. When revealed in Alter Ego, this card gains Surge, so we have to do another card, because that's what Surge is, which is, when revealed in Alter Ego, this card gains Surge. Oh, man. And we lose the game. <laughs> well, I figured it would go one way or the other. There was no way to just realize he was going to scheme, scheme, scheme. Well, that's how it goes. He just... I mean, I can play it out, but he's going to scheme for one plus zero. He still schemes for one, eight, nine, which is enough to pull off his scheme, defeat Robert Kelly. So he defeats Robert Kelly, which if Robert Kelly leaves play, the players lose the game. I can check to see if I had anything, but I did not. Well, I mean, there was no way to know it was going to hit. I mean, I guess really now, wow, there's four ways that that could have uh, gone. But, well, I don't.
don't think it gave us much of a chance to try out this deck and see. But I mean, I done quite a good amount of damage. And I mean, if I go back to what was in my hand. I was going to be able to get, th get rid of a lot of that thread that got built up. I was going to make it to where the upgrades that were attached to the character, to the bad guys would lose the temporary so they would be permanent. And I was going to make it to where Angel was doing more attack and more thwart. So I was set up pretty good to do some stuff. Just the way it goes. Uh, scheme, scheme, scheme. I'm a renting savage. All right. Well, I'm going to clean this up and we'll get to the uh, Phoenix one. Thank you for watching and have a great day.